Um, uh, good morning. I'm Pete Moore. I'm the administrator of Mount Aloysius. I think uh, I've seen many of you at some point over the last several years. I think I've spoken at uh, an in-service or leadership talk uh, at Fairfield County for the last five, six years. So um, I must be doing something all right. There's someone right there that <laughs> she just popped up. Really. Um, so I was asked today to come do a half hour talk or so on the 100 zero principle. This is something, a uh, principle I've talked about quite a bit uh, in my talks. It, it won't be new to you, but maybe I'll, I'll dig a little deeper, give you some information I haven't given you before on this. So the 100 zero principle is, it's, it came from a very short video. I'll let you look it up. I'm not going to play it today. It's about a two and a half minute video. And, um, there. The high five is off for a minute. There. So this two and a half minute video is the, it's just music and words. And um, the, the concept is really quite simple. But if you do this, and it's something I, everything I talk about, I try to practice on a daily basis. Try. Somebody cut me off yesterday on Broad Street in Columbus, and I almost lost you know, I started writing a nasty note to the person so I could hold it up in the window, but uh, that's not safe. So I still slip up every once in a while, but I try to live these things on a daily basis. So um, the 100-0 principle is, is about giving 100% to relationships and expecting nothing in return. Okay, so you're giving the 100% and that other person you expect nothing. Okay, so when we have talked about this concept over the years we've gotten some pushback on that and and people say well why would I want to give all of that to people that want to give nothing back right and that's a that's a valid question why would we want to give 100% when people don't want to give anything back I, I think it's a fair question but um, Especially us in the human services field, I, I think we have to have a higher standard for ourselves. I, I think we have to treat people well. That should be our daily standard. And, and, and really, if we get nothing back, then we get nothing back. So I'll, I'll explain here a little bit more. So my mom used to say, kill them with kindness. And kill them with kindness. Any of your moms or dads say that? <laughs> kill them. Murder them by being so kind, which I always thought, do we really want to kill them? Is that very kind? You know, but it's kind of a contradiction. <laughs> but if you think about kill them with kindness, it's the same as 100-0. Is even if someone's treating you badly, or if they're not being very nice to you, you're still going to kill them with kindness. You're going to be kind no matter what. That's what 100-0 is really all about, is that kill them with kindness. And the other thing is, um, my new thing these days is go be good. Just, just go be good, okay? Be good to people, uh, take care of people. And the idea behind that is, first we have to take care of ourselves. So we have to give ourselves 100 zero. Does that make sense? Many of us are so hard on ourselves that the only way we can truly give 100% to others and expect nothing in return, is if we're able to look in the mirror or walk around every day and say, you know what, I'm, I'm a good person. If you're hard on yourself, it's much harder to do that. Would you agree? Much harder to do that. A lot of us are very, including myself, are very hard on ourselves. Where we got to loosen up on ourselves, give ourselves 100%. So, but this takes practice. To be good to others, and to be good to ourselves takes practice. And I'm, I'm talking about real practice, like repetition practice. Like the same as if you were uh, uh, doing yoga or lifting weights or running or walking or whatever. It, to, to get better at it, you practice. I tell my kids every day, you want to get better at that? You want to be good at something? You practice it. You want to be a good person? You have to practice it. And you have to practice it at times where it's really, normally you wouldn't be good. Right? You have to look in the mirror at yourself in the morning and say, okay, I'm ready to take on this day. I feel good. I'm a good person. And really mean it. 
And you also have to look at the people that you interact with on a daily basis. So um, if I think about my day today, I'm interacting with you, I'm going to go have a meeting uh, here in a little bit, then I'm going to go to Mount Aloysius, and all the people I interact with, I'll interact with probably 30 people today, at least, at least. So how am I going to influence each one of those people? How do I see each one of those people? So the practice comes through uh, those interactions that we have on a daily basis. I, I call it the uh, uh, give one percent, give one hundred percent, one percent of your day. One hundred percent, one percent of your day. You know what one percent of your day is? Fourteen minutes. Fourteen minutes is one percent of your day. So what I ask people is. Do five positive interactions a day. Practice this idea of 100-0 five times a day. How long do you think it takes to have a positive interaction? Think about your average interaction. How long does it take? It takes 10 seconds. It takes 30 seconds. It takes a minute. It depends on the interaction. If I go up to Ray and say, Ray, how are you doing today? And he says, I'm doing great, Pete. How are you? How long does that interaction take? Or, Ray, you look great. It's great to see you. Right? You're welcome. Ray. Thanks. I really appreciate um, that. But if I have that interaction, <laughs> that could mean something. Ray could be having a very bad day. But I'm reaching out. I'm making the effort. I'm taking responsibility for that relationship. That's the practice I'm talking about. We always walk by people, and we may think about, I should really interact right now with that person. But do we always act on it? That's the reps, the repetitions. That's a practice I'm talking about. Those interactions we have every day, how are we going to influence them? How are we going to give them 100%? Is it always easy to give 100%? No. Some days we don't feel like doing it at all. And it really depends. If you have a car trouble or you can't pay a bill or uh, um, you're fighting with a spouse or a loved one, Whatever it is can throw you off from giving that 100%. That's where we got to really know ourselves, this idea of self-assessment. What am I going into? When I interact with those people, what am I heading into? What kind of attitude do I, do I have? So one thing I always talk about, and you've heard me talk about before, if you heard me speak, is leading with your heart. So we've talked about that one word that best describes you and your heart as a caregiver, as a person in the human services field. So that word comes from Willie Jones, right? That, that concept comes from Willie Jones. And he talked about, if you're going to work with my kid who has a learning disability, I want to know that one word that best describes your heart. So my word is passionate. So if I stay passionate, if I, if I keep that fire lit, I will do well with my interactions. Uh, if I bring my passion, every one of those interactions I have with another person throughout this day will be a positive interaction. And it's not all high fives and smiles, right? It's just maybe having a, um, a problem-solving attitude if someone brings you an issue. Maybe it's helping someone work through, a, work through something that's going on personally in their lives. It's those interactions. If I lead with passion in whatever heart, uh, word you're talking about, uh, which is caring probably, or compassionate, or loving, whatever your word is, you lead with that and you'll be successful. So start with the heart. That's that self-assessment piece. The second piece, if we, if we lead with my, if I lead with my passionate heart, my thoughts about the people I interact, interact with will be positive. Does that make sense? If I lead with a negative heart, my thoughts will follow and my thoughts will be negative. So we have to change our thoughts. Lead with our heart, change our thoughts. So when we do that, our words will be different. If we have positive thoughts about people, then the result will be our actions, how we use our hands, how we use our eyes, how we use our ears, how we use our words will all be different. How can we influence people? How can we help them have a better day through those simple interactions? Starts with the heart, leads to the thoughts, then leads to actions. Does that make sense? So, 
The other thing I want to talk about that's huge that I try to do as much as I can is I try to invest time in people. What I'm talking about is an investment of your time. Because if I work and I invest time in all these relationships that I have every day, what will happen is I'll build a network, right? And if I invest time in that network, whatever problem solving we have to do in the future, whatever conversations we have to have in the future, will be better conversations. This, this is huge when, um, there's something I've said for years that, especially in working with families for the uh, ISCs out there, uh, if you work with a family on a regular basis, the number one thing that I tell people to get is uh, a thing of chapstick. That's the number one tool you can have in working with families. Because you're going to kiss so much butt, you're going to need chapstick. Because your lips will be so chapped. I know that's gross, but I don't care. Uh, it, it's, it's that idea, that's 100 zero. Is I may need to have difficult conversations with someone in my network at some point. But the investment I make, the time that I invest, and those people ahead of time will pay off when those difficult conversations happen. They will pay off because I would have taken the time to make sure that we're in a good spot. I am going to take the time to take responsibility for those relationships. Here's another way time works. So um, I think I'm a fairly intelligent person. But I'm really not. And that gets me into trouble sometimes. Especially, I, I practice 100 zero in my marriage every day. Every day. Because I often think about the old Pete would have said things that he really didn't take time and really work through in his head. Right? I may spout off something thinking I'm a really intelligent person. Or I may try to solve uh, my wife's all her problems just by one swoop. You know, because I'm so damn smart. So the time, for me, is taking the time to think about the next thing I'm going to say. Good communicators think before they speak. Use their thoughts before the words come out. So I may take time to think about the next thing. These people that I work, interact with at work, I may say, I need to sleep on that. I may not make decisions. Uh, especially if it's an emotionally charged decision. If I can afford the time to sleep on it, I'm going to sleep on it. Have you ever typed out that email that you want to send really bad? That probably wouldn't be the best thing that doesn't fit the 100 zero principle when you type that damn thing out? I suggest if you're going to do that, type it in a Word document so you don't accidentally press send, right? <laughs> you can always cut and paste later, right? These are the things that if you take the time to really think about how you're going to impact those relationships in your life by that one simple thing that you're going to do, if you didn't think it through, if you didn't take the time, then you're violating the 100-0 principle. You're not giving 100% to that interaction. Does that all make sense? So, the last thing when it comes to that head-to-toe self-assessment is feet. And I think feet are so important. Um, because when it comes to building these interactions, when it comes to if you are in a spot where you're not getting along with a coworker or someone in your family or whatever else, use your feet and go see them. Go spend time. Make the effort. The, it, it will pay off dividends. I, I was telling them before we started this thing, I sometimes have trouble with these video conferences because I can't see what these, how these people are reacting really well. I, I like this group because I can look at you. And I said, I, I hate conference calls, things like that, because I, I like to see people roll their eyes at me, <laughs> not hear it. So I am 100% dedicated that if I have, especially if I have an issue with someone, I will go see them. I will not email them. I will not call them. I will go wherever it takes to go see them because People, for one, appreciate that 100% effort that you're putting in. And for two, it's just worth the time to sit and look and interact. Right? There's a great, uh, I forget what company it is, but I've really adopted this, this idea about 
how you use email and how you use text and things like that. I will generally only use email to share a date, like set a meeting, or to share a document. Every other interaction happens face to face. And Mana wishes I go and see you. If I got an issue, I will go and see you and I will spend time with you and we'll sit. And we'll talk about nonsense for a while, which is an investment in that relationship. Then we'll talk about the issue we gotta talk about. I think people really appreciate that. That's tough when you guys are spread out like you're spread out in a big county and you have all these locations. But serious issues should always be dealt with face to face. Don't press send. Don't press send. So here's the thing I gotta tell you. I've told this story before, but I think it, it, for me it represents the best way to represent the 100-0 principle. And that is if you are a person who opens doors for others, at the store or wherever else, are you, anybody like that? Where you open the door? I was raised, kill them with kindness, I was raised to open doors for people. And sometimes the reaction you get isn't always the reaction you want. So I was at five below, my favorite store. I call it the Saks Fifth Avenue of dollar stores. <laughs> so I was at Five Below and I opened the door, had my three little kids with me, and this lady walked in and I, I waited the appropriate time to wait for this lady to walk in and she just <laughs> walked right by me. So on that day, for whatever reason, I wasn't practicing the 100 zero principle. <laughs> and I yelled after her, You're welcome! <laughs> Right. All right, so it was a great example for my kids, you know, how to be an ass. You know, and I don't know, I don't know what that lady was going through, what, why she didn't say thank you, but if you're truly practicing, and this is what people struggle with, if you're truly practicing the 100-0 principle, I expect nothing when I open that door. I do it simply to be helpful. I do it simply to be a good person. It's when we expect something in return, when we expect a gift back, that's where we get into trouble. That's where we diminish ourselves. That's where we either lower ourselves to that other person's standard if they're truly not a nice person, and they're not many of those out there. Or we just diminish ourselves as a person by just not being good. What I try to do when this lady, you know, I slip up. I'm not perfect. But I, if this happens again, and it happens, I open a lot of doors and people don't say thank you, and that's okay. I try to put myself in their shoes. What is my thoughts about that person? Are they going through a tough time themselves? Are they in a big hurry? They got to get something for their kids' projects. We all do this. There's a guy that passed me yesterday for absolutely zero reason on a two-lane road, a non-pass zone, by the way. And I'm, I don't know what's going on. Maybe he really has to get home. So after I got over my initial, what the hell are you doing? I, I settled down a bit, right? And I thought about maybe he really has to go somewhere really quick. Why am I upset about this? I have no control over that guy. Why am I upset about this? So as I open doors, and I let people in, and whatever they say, it doesn't matter to me, I'm just being helpful. What I am concerned about when people really fight and they, they feel like almost a vindictive spirit about, if I give something, I want it back, we tend to lower the expectations for ourselves. Does that make sense? We tend to put ourselves in a spot where we're not as good as we can be. And that, that bothers me. Because I want to be the best person I can. I want you to be the best person we can. Especially because many of the people we work with on a daily basis, working for a county board of DD here in Ohio, they need us, they need our 100%. And those of you uh, in the room now that maybe don't work directly with people with developmental disabilities, we need your 100% because you take care of those who do. Right? Some we were talking about payroll. There's nothing more important than getting paid. Right? And how much influence, if you have a role in that, how much influence you have <laughs> over this entire facility. Because if that doesn't work, the facility goes a little 
crazy. The organization goes a little crazy. So are we going to make the commitment to practice these skills, practice 100 zero? That's, that's the key. We have to make a personal commitment. And we need people in our lives that will help us also make that commitment. Because that commitment's not an easy one to make. So if I start to slip up, if I start to uh, move away from my passionate heart, if my thoughts about people change, I need someone close to me that can say, Pete, you need to straighten up. You can do better. Do you have people like that in your life? If you don't, you got to find them. I call that concept the scream room. So sometimes you're not always given 100%. You need a scream room with someone who will reel you back in that can say, hey, straighten up, straighten up, and let's, let's get back to being 100%. If you have a screen room, have someone in it that straightens you up, not someone that's going to help commiserate or help paint the picketing signs as you pick it around the building, right? It's a person that's going to bring you back to reality. All right? See if I missed anything. So, kill them with kindness. You can only influence. You can't change. Just influence. Self-assess every day with every interaction. You should go from head to toe. What are my thoughts? How do I use my words? How do I use my eyes, my ears, my touch, my time, my heart, and my feet? If I really care about someone, my feet point towards that pe person, not away. Right? Go be good. It takes practice. Give 100% 1% of your day. Devote 14 minutes to taking care of people and it will start to spread like wildfire. Because eventually the 100-0 concept is all about this. If you give 100%, that person will recognize it and they'll start to return. But they won't do it if you're not giving 100%. We good? We good. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Thanks for staring at my belly all morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still recording that. That's good. Oh. <laughs> See ya. Thank you.